How many people here had a goldfish or something similar growing up or knew someone that did? Okay, but how many people knew someone with a saltwater fish though? Saltwater fish are not an everyday household pet yet, but they are slowly getting there. And this is mainly because of two reasons. The husbandry needed to keep these fish as well as the equipment to meticulously keep them can be expensive and time consuming. Over the years though, what was once equipment only available to a large local aquarium has been made smaller and cheaper to the average consumer. Saltwater fish are some of the most beautiful and colorful fish you'll ever see in the world. Vacations to tropical destinations where you'll see all these fish are becoming more and more expensive, but keeping them yourself will always be an option. I've been taking care of them for the past 10 years and had almost 500 gallons worth of aquariums up and running at one point. Today I will give you an idea of what it takes to take care of saltwater fish. I will explain the basics of saltwater fish care, include all the equipment necessary to give them as close to a natural life as possible, as well as some of that equipment and how it works. First, let us begin with all the equipment necessary for your saltwater aquarium. According to the author of Checklist for a Saltwater Aquarium at home, you will need a fish tank that is 10 to 20 gallons, but I even suggest something larger as 40 gallons, or what we'd normally call in a hobby a 40 gallon breeder for a first time fish keeper especially. Some basic lighting to get you started with a day and night cycle will also be a good addition. So this is what a 20 gallon fish tank looks like. No taller than your hip. And it's also why I suggest 40 gallons because 20 gallons just isn't enough. If you make a mistake, your fish may pay for that. And if you have a lot more water to work with, it's easier to take care of them. This is also a protein skimmer, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, small, but it looks like any other standard filter you can hang on the back, except this one you actually set inside the fish tank. Now, saltwater fish are used to lots of water movement, so you'll need powerheads to really stir up the water in your tank and create waves as well as live rock to bring all those beneficial bacteria to jumpstart your ecosystem. This is just rock you see in the ocean, but it's taken out after it's been dried and then they uh, grow it again, basically, artificially. Salt mix as well as test kits, a saltwater hydrometer, and multiple heaters in case one fails are essential. The author also suggests all kinds of filtration equipment such as filter beds, canister filters, and protein skimmers as well as filter media. For example, I personally use filter media and uh, any number of protein skimmers. The single most important piece of equipment, in my opinion, is a protein skimmer. Some people will tell you that they're not required as they have a successful aquarium due to their expensive price tag, but they are by far the best piece of filtration equipment you can use and it's better to invest in one early rather than wait till later. A protein skimmer is just a container shaped like a funnel, typically made of acrylic that creates millions of tiny bubbles via a pump and an air hose. According to Robert from Bulk Reef Supply, those bubbles swirling around create a froth of sorts, kind of like your hot cocoa during winter, that carries with it broken down food, fish waste, suspended particles, uh, up the funnel and over an edge into a collection cup for easy disposal. He also explains that the filter also works like an air stone you would typically see in a freshwater tank creating all those bubbles, like in Nemo. The millions of air bubbles mix with the water so well that you will never have to worry about having enough oxygen in, in the tank for your fish. Also, just as important, powerheads and salt mix are both necessary for a thriving saltwater aquarium and two things that you'll never see in a regular freshwater aquarium for the most part. Salt mix preferably by the brand Instant Ocean or Red Sea which both come highly recommended by me, are both excellent for turning what would be a freshwater tank into a saltwater aquarium. These salt mixes are not like your typical table salt you'd see in any way. Per Red Sea, their salt contains all the needed elements such as calcium, magnesium, and carbonates necessary for your swimming friends. This is both in their standard salt as well as their Coral Pro mix for those who wish to keep coral in the aquarium with their fish, but that's for a whole another topic. All of this is mixed into the water before you even add it to the tank. I personally use five 55 gallon trash cans from Home Depot specifically for this. They're very large and easy to rinse out with a hose outside after. All this mixing, both in the trash cans and the aquarium, once it's up and running, is done with power heads. These are nothing but water pumps, but with propellers. They do an excellent job at creating the currents and waves on the surface that you would normally see on the natural ocean. You may wonder how all this comes together and how to keep it all running. That's easier said than done. After spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars for larger setups buying the equipment, you get to wait. That's right. After everything's set up, you get to wait. Because a new tank does not have the beneficial bacteria yet to keep living creatures happy. 
Live Rock helps with this, but you will still need to wait weeks or even a month for the natural cycle to kind of run and get everything set up so that your fish don't get hit with everything at once. This is what the test kits are for. You will test for things like phosphate and nitrate, as well as a hydrometer to check how much salt is in the water and make sure it's the correct amount to what the natural ocean is like. To conclude, after buying all the necessary equipment, setting up all that equipment, testing all your parameters, and waiting weeks, if not longer, you can add your first fish. The next time you visit the zoo or an aquarium, remember, what looks like something impossible is actually very possible with dedication and a love for something beautiful. 75 gallons or 50 gallons or 40 gallons may not seem like much compared to millions of gallons at the Cleveland Aquarium, but it is truly something special. To have a piece of the ocean in your home is a demanding hobby and can also deplete a considerable amount of your wallet, but it is well worth it. it and if you want to be able to see those fish you saw on vacation one time in your house,